Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Patch 3.18 is just a few days away, and so I thought I would go through some tips for League Start to ensure that you get the most out of what is one of the most exciting times in any Path of Exile League. Now, I want to start by saying that you need to set goals first. Your ends will determine the means you're going to take to get there, and some goals require more of a hardcore focus on the game, other goals don't require that, and so that will impact your approach to League Start. So is your goal to defeat a specific boss? Is it to acquire a specific item? Is it to reach a certain threshold for challenge rewards? Is it to goof off and try lots of zany things? That was my approach in 316 and 315. Is it to learn an unfamiliar mechanic? Or is it simply to get better at the game? Your choice should shape your plans for the league start considerably. If your goal is to get a mage blood, you're going to need to focus more on acquiring currency than if your goal is to get an Arakali Spang. But if your goal is to get an Arakali Spang early, you still are going to need to take currency generation seriously. Whereas if your goal is just to get Ungol's Harmony and Wasp Nest, you don't need to do that. So let your goals then decide your build. Do you want to beat all content? Then in that case, I would strongly suggest that you play something proven and very strong. Not necessarily as your first build of the league, maybe you'll do something else first, but you want to be able to come to something very proven, very strong. If you're not fussed about the hard content, then play anything that seems fun. And most people will fall somewhere in between, in which case the more powerful a build you pick, the smoother your progress will be. But sometimes the journey is more important than the destination to you, and as a result, you might decide that you want to go with something really goofy and try to force your way to 25, 30, even 36 of the new challenges. And keep in mind the challenges are harder this time than they've been in most previous leagues. So you want to then work out major turning points in your build's progression, and how competitive you'll need to be in order to achieve these turning points. So let's say that you want to build a two character team. Your first character is a fast mapper, and then your second character is an incredibly powerful boss killer. And your goal is that your second character is going to kill all of the new bosses. Uber Shaper, Uber Maven, Uber Cyrus, you want to do them all. That's your league aim, that's your goal. In that case, you might identify three key turning points for your mapper. The first turning point being reaching level 90. At that point, your build's fully online, you're going to have level 19, maybe level 20 gems, and you're going to start to be really quite powerful at clearing things really quickly. But you don't have any rig chase items yet. Your second turning point might be acquiring the unique jewel inspired learning. Now, this might take you until you hit level 93. And then your next goal might be to save from Mage Blood, which then your boss character will use. And this might take you all the way to level 97. Or maybe it's beyond the goals that you can achieve in one league and you know that already. In that case, you might want to pick a different turning point, something a bit more realistic than Mage Blood. Maybe it's to get an Aegis Aurora build and a 15 Exalt chest. In trade, the first of these is a solo goal, so hitting level 90. The second and third, you need to compete with other players who want the same small supply of those chase items. And that's really important. When you are competing with other players for a scarce resource, you need to be more competitive. And that's something that's going to impact how your approach to League start. This then makes every edge matter. If you're trying to get a Mage Blood and an Inspired Learning, then you are going to need to have much more of a Razor Focus early on. Otherwise, the people who do have that Razor Focus early on will beat you to getting all of the Inspired Learnings that are on the market. And then they'll beat you to the Mage Bloods as well. And then by the time you get around to getting a Mage Blood, it'll be much more expensive. Contrast this to someone that just wants the two easier to acquire uniques we discussed earlier, Ungol's Harmony and Wasp Nest. In this case, this isn't a very competitive goal because by day two of a trade league, those items are everywhere and a lot of people aren't even picking them up. So in that case, taking launch day seriously is just much less important. Of course, you can and should still go hard on day one if you'll have fun doing so, but you won't be setting yourself back in achieving your league goals if you do decide to go a little bit more in goof off mode on day one, which is perfectly fine, you know, do what's fun for you. Now, in terms of ways to generate currency, crafting is fantastic if and only if you know the meta. This is the single most profitable way to play days one and two if you know how to do it. This is to build up a couple of hundred chaos through regular play, then buy items that are not yet worthy of equipping but that are missing one piece, and then add that piece. So you can see here Hate Blast, this gavel that I've got on screen at the moment. This is a real item that was going around in the 3.17 league. Uh, it's not very good by endgame standards, but it is very good by day one standards, and that's probably when it came from. It has 124% increased physical damage, it has tier one attack speed, and it has a bench crafted at 16 to 29 physical damage. Now, if this item didn't have that 16 to 29 physical damage, it would actually be a pretty poor weapon. 
but someone has come along and applied that benchcraft to it because they've probably sniped it in trade, recognizing, oh, here's a fantastic item starting point that's not quite complete. I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna slap this craft on it, and then I'm just gonna list it up for resale. And that's something that you can really do profitably on days one and two if you know the meta. There's also a number of ways that you can mass produce items for popular builds, especially things that require obscure crafting methods. So good examples of this is things like plus two minion wands, especially because the usual way of doing that with fossils ends up, uh, whilst you're only one in 32 to hit the minion wand that you want, you're also one in 20 to fail with style and hit a different sellable item, which is a plus two to the level of chaos skill gem wands, which is also pretty good. And there's a few other things you can hit that are also better than just vendoring the item and starting over. So there's a bunch of options there for crafting if you know the meta, but if you don't know the meta, don't worry, there are other options. The next option is to run the content you personally know best. There's a league or a mechanic that you are an expert on. Maybe you never fail a Maven's memory game, maybe you like Heist, maybe you like Breach. Whatever it is, if it's got good loot, other players are going to want it, and early on it's a seller's market. Early on, items like the Ulnatol Shield are worth a massive amount because better items simply don't exist on the market. Late in the league, you reach a point where there are more of that Ulnatol Shield than there are people who want it, but early on that's not the case. So if you like Breach a lot, then that's something you could try to specialise in getting. Make a character that's really fast and really effective at doing breaches, and then just try and get that Ulnatol Shield and all the other things that come from, from Breach exclusively. Spec hard into your chosen content on the Atlas. Trade for Scarabs. Do everything that you can to raise a focus on that mechanic and then reap the rewards and turn around and sell them while they're still hot. I'm very seriously considering doing this myself. And if I do, I'll be focusing on Expedition and using Rog's Crafts and also Gwenon in order to generate high tier bases. One exception that I do want to point out is that Delve is pretty bad very early on in the league, or at least it has been for the last several leagues. And the reason for this is that Delve doesn't have good rewards until you get to a couple of hundred depth, and by the time you're a couple of hundred depth in, it's really hard to push that far in Delve until a couple of days into the league. For that reason, I don't suggest doing this with Delve. If Delve's your favourite part of the game, I'd pick something else to focus on days one, two, and three. Of course, you can disregard this if you want. Uh, just be aware that it can be pretty tricky to get a lot of currency out of your success in Delve. That said, maybe not this time. Recombinators are being added in this patch with the Sentinel mechanics, and there are Delve exclusive mods that are really good. So we shall see what happens there. Next up, you want to have a detailed plan for your progression. Now, for me, this is the worst part of my game. Levels 1 to 65, going through the axe. I'm pretty terrible at them. I'm much slower than the best racers in the game. So what I've done is that I have written out the following. In fact, I have just simply taken Tai Tai Killer's advice. He's probably the best player in the game at doing the axe. So I've written out a plan for my gem links before level 12 my planned gem links from levels 12 to 27, my plan for the library, do I skip it or do I do it? Now, Tai Tai suggested that I do it, so I'm going to do it. Plan gem links for levels 28 to 50, and plan gem links for level 50 and on. So have all of these written down on a piece of old school paper. Add any essential vendor recipes, such as level 20 wand, which is an alteration orb, plus a rare topaz ring, plus a wand with the desired links, and I'll give you an uber lightning damage to spells leveling wand with a minimum level of 20. Remember that you can temporarily spec a Lyra. Even if your endgame plan is to kill all the bandits, helping a Lyra will make your character much stronger until you reach a point that you're starting to get really hungry for jewel sockets. Normally in my experience in progression, that's somewhere between levels 90 and 93. And by the time you're level 90, the cost of 20 regret orbs to respec your bandits is trivial. So for that reason, I generally suggest that you level with a Lyra and then you respec at endgame. Of course, if you're worried that you will forget to respec at endgame, then that is a valid reason to just go for Eremir straight up. Of course, maybe you'll decide that you want to stick with a Lyra too. That's something that makes sense for some characters. Also, do the same with your passive tree. Write down your passive tree plans. Uh, plan out a passive tree and have it all written down on paper. Then that will help you a lot when, you, when it comes to actually leveling your character. This is something I haven't done in the past and it's something that has really slowed me down because I reach Act 4 and I realise, oh, I'm not happy with the damage I'm doing, but do I want to actually spend half an hour figuring out what to replace it with? No, I'll just push on with this bad damage. Now I've got a much better plan than that. Next thing that you want to do is have a plan for getting a 6 link. After you get to maps, it's time to plan for the biggest damage multipliers readily available 
And one of these is getting a six link, even if it does wreck your mana. Best sources for these. There are curios in Enchanted Armaments Heist. These drop six links that are actually good, but they often drop five links instead, or even no linked items. So these are really strong, but you won't have an endless supply of them. If you're in a trade league, you can definitely buy these and they're really good to run. But if you're not doing heist for whatever reason, then you can always decide to pass on these and go for something else. Second choice is divination cards. Now note that some of these are drop level restricted at level 80 plus, and this is a fairly recent change. The Dapper Prodigy that you see here is drop level restricted 80 plus now. I don't believe it was in earlier incarnations of the game. I think this is something that was changed in 316 or 317. Your next option is corrupt strong boxes. So you can find a strong box that's corrupted and they will semi-frequently drop a six linked item. Most of the time these will have complete rubbish mods and also potentially colors that are of no use to your build. But in a trade league, you will find one of these that's up on the market that is the colors you want. Now we'll point out that Tabula Rasa is an option here, but the item is just objectively really bad. You can use it, definitely use it if you get it, definitely feel free to go for it as a stepping stone, but you do want to get rid of it as soon as possible. My favourite way of doing a six link myself, and this is something that is going to annoy a lot of crafters who probably do this for profit at league start because this is quite lucrative, is to find one of the divination cards that grants an item level 100 six link, trade for a set of them, then split them with split base. So for instance, I tend to prefer doing this with sacrificial garbs over anything else. There's a divination card called The Sacrifice. It's really rare. You're not going to get a set of it yourself, but you will find it on trade. You'll just buy a bunch of these cards from different people, turn them in, use a Phenomenal Plagued Arachnid Beastcraft to split it in two. And once you've done that, apply a Deafening Essence of Greed to each of them, equip the one that is better for your character, and sell the other one you will usually be able to sell the weaker one of the two for 90% of the cost that it costs you to do this entire process. Uh, it's crazy. And of course, if you want to do this for profit, then you can just trade for a whole bunch of copies of the sacrifice, not just the four, but many, many more, and split them all. Deafening Essence of Greed them all. It is super lucrative. Of course, now that I've said this in your video, chances are the word's out and we might have to find a different strategy instead. You can also use one of the divination cards that grants an influence six link. And if you do that, then you can use your Harvest Crafts on them, and they will often get you a decent piece of starter gear. This is the Harvest Reforge Crafts. We're not talking about any of the special ones. We're talking the ones you get all the time. Usually, you'll find that these Reforge mods will give you something within the first 20 tries. Next up is the possibility of partying with other players. So, leveling with a friend isn't an option in Solo Self-Found, but it can be great fun in trade. Leveling with random other players is also great fun, and this is one of my favourite things to do, not necessarily so much at league start, but often on leveling a second character, is just open it up to random players from the general public, see who joins. Leveling in a group tends to be faster than solo leveling if and only if you have group leveling practice, or alternately, if the rest of the group are considerably better players than you and they carry you along. Otherwise, grouping up can be a little bit slower because you often have communication issues, but it's often more fun than playing solo, and I do highly recommend trying it. This is something that might set you back an hour in terms of your time to maps, but that can be worth it if you're going to have more fun during the leveling experience. You also just get to talk to people, and most of my in-game friends list comes from people that I have met whilst either leveling with other players, or just grouping with other players at early and especially at late endgame. The next question that comes up a lot is storing wealth. You don't want to watch your 500 Chaos Orbs lose buying power over the first week. But also don't fall for the trap of buying Exalts early. This used to be the conventional wisdom and be right. Everyone would say, get those Exalts early, they just go up in value. But what's happened now is two things. Firstly, we have Delirium on the map device this league, and so there's going to be long-term demand for Chaos Orbs in the economy. Secondly, too many people learnt this trick. And so you found this situation where it worked really well for the first eight hours of the league, but after that, the price of exalts would shoot up against the Chaos Orb, not just reflecting their, their utility, but also reflecting that there was a lot of speculation going on, that everyone was trying to get in, there was big fear of missing out. And the problem with bubbles that are caused by fear of missing out is that eventually they pop. And often we've been seeing exalted orbs collapsing in price pretty early in a league lately. It's not super... It's not generally risky to buy them at 80 chaos, but often once they reach that point, they won't go up much for a little while 
or there'll be jitters in the market. And it's generally not the best way to store your wealth. What you wanna do is look for items that shoot up in value against the exalted orb. Now this is mostly consumables that are too valuable to use on day one. Consumables do fantastic things if you have the right input for them, but that right input is very hard to find. Now, some of the ones I would like to suggest to you are tempering orbs, tailoring orbs, regrade lenses, and cortexes, and also divination cards that lead to them. So you've got here eternal bonds. You might not be able to afford a cortex, but you can probably afford an eternal bonds divination card or two of them. And you can also look for other things along the same lines. Chayola breach stones are another good one. Uh, pure Chayola breach stones, especially. All of these are just consumables that increase in value over the league. Also, you wanna sell all of your sort of good items as soon as possible before the market floods. Again, this is trade league specific. If you're an SSF, then you will need to find everything you want yourself. But most important of all, have fun. And may your valves have interesting results.